Hello everyone, welcome to today's daily devotional. I'm Pastor Will, here I'm a spiritual formation pastor at In Focus Church. I'm here to share with you today from uh, our sermon this week and from God's Word. So this, this devotional is going to be from 2 Peter 1 verses 5 through 11. It says, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. For in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we don't always associate the Christian faith with effort. And sometimes in our American church, we actually go the opposite way, where we dumb down the Christian faith to say so much that you don't have to do anything. Uh, that you just have to have the faith of a mustard seed, and your faith, your faith and your knowledge of God never has to grow. But what the Bible teaches is that we are to make strenuous effort to live a godly life. Yes, we affirm that we are saved by grace through faith alone in Christ Jesus, but there is still human responsibility for us to live out righteously in response to what God has done. There's as Christians, we live in this tension. We live in a world where we, God, Jesus has already accomplished the work of salvation, but it is yet to be completed in full. We live in this world where Christ has inaugurated the kingdom, but yet it's not uh, fulfilled completely in its uh, completion of the new heaven and new earth. We live in this tension between what has been done through Christ on the cross and what is to await His second coming and the establishment of a new heaven and new earth. This tension of already but not yet. And so as Christians, we live in this tension of already, but not yet. And we live out our Christian ethic, our Christian uh, life from out of what Christ has already done as we anticipate what has not yet happened and what is to come. And so faith is really our response to salvation through what God has done. Our, our faith is a response to the grace that God has given us through Christ. And this really becomes the foundation of the Christian life. And so we as Christians must live out our calling from God and the election of, of God saving us. And we must do this in the way that we live our lives in response to this gospel call. So Peter says we must be diligent to confirm our calling and election. Why? So we have assurance of salvation. As I said, we live in this tension in between. And so our, the way we live our life in response to God's calling and election is, is in an anticipation of what's to come. So the way that we assure ourselves of the inheritance to come is to live lives that honor God. Let me ask you this. Do you ever con- consider or question whether you are truly saved? Uh, do you ever fear that uh, sin will keep you from inheriting eternal life in Christ? Well, the good news is that in Christ, if we are in Christ, then we cannot fall away. You cannot uh, backslide. You cannot lose your salvation because we are His. And in fact, it's quite the opposite. Christ empowers us through His work on the cross to live a life of faithful obedience devoted to Him because of what He has done. And so we live our lives this way, empowered by Christ to prove uh, the salvation we have, knowing that if we persevere in the faith and we continue to live this life of obedience, that it reflects that we're saved, but also that we can't lose our salvation. So the fruit that we see in our lives as we grow in Christian maturity is the evidence of our salvation and the assurance of our eternal salvation. It's what keeps us secure and what gives us confidence in the hope we have to come. So we must be diligent to strive for godly character in our lives as evidence of our salvation as we anticipate what is to come. And Peter says that whoever lacks these qualities that he just listed out is blind to the fact that Christ died for us. When we fail to live out a life of obedience, a life of increasing uh, Christian maturity, then it really shows that we have forgotten or don't realize what Christ has done on the cross to save us and restore us to Himself, or that we've forgotten what is to come. And we are not living our lives with an eternal mindset. So our lives 
must reflect that which Christ has done. It must reflect the hope that we have in Jesus. So let me ask you, let me ask this question before as we close. What does making every effort look like in your life? What how are you making every effort? How can you do a better job of making every effort to live a fruitful, obedient life? And what makes it difficult? What makes it difficult to live a godly life and to make every effort to live this godly life? And, and how does your life reflect what Christ has done on the cross in saving you? How does your life reflect the salvation that you have received in Christ? So think about these questions, ponder them a little bit, and reflect on today's devotional to remember and remind yourself what Christ has done and how it should transform the way we live your lives. Hope you had a great day. I hope your rest of your day will be uh, amazing as well. Uh, join us on Sunday at our times of 9.30 and 11.15. We can't wait to see you then.